Hi everyone, I am Bhumika and today we have with us Rohan Jain. Rohan is currently working as a consultant at BCG. He holds a bachelor's in computer science from IIT Kanpur and an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. He also maintains an active blog on Quora with hundreds and thousands of followers and a travel blog on Instagram. Recently, he has also authored a romantic novel called The Promises We Made, which has been featured in the Times of India and other leading magazines with stunning reviews. We are delighted to have you here with us, Rohan. Welcome to our channel. Thanks, Bhumika. Thanks for the warm introduction. Very delighted to be uh, on Paternity as well. All right. So uh, let's travel in time backwards. Having become a celebrated author, do you Google yourself? <laughs> so, yes, I, I'll be frank. Uh, you know, uh, Rohan Jain is a very common name. Right. Uh, so uh, I think a few years back, I used to actually, uh, you know, dream that one day when I Google Rohan Jain, it should be the first link that comes up, uh, you know, whenever, whenever I do that. So, yes, I do that sometimes. Uh, and if, if it is the first link that comes up, it does give me some kind of happiness. Yeah. But yeah, I'll be frank, I do that sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. So uh, let's go with the book you published. So uh, what was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Uh, so I've been writing on Quora for uh, you know quite a bit, right? So I think when I, when I started writing on Quora, uh, that is when I realized how powerful language can be. Uh, because the post that I wrote, I started receiving a lot of messages from uh, students who were preparing for JE, who were preparing for CAT and who actually mentioned how uh, the post really helped them uh, prepare and how they impacted their lives. And that is when I realized how words can really impact somebody. Uh, you know, that, that was my first introduction to that. And I've been trying to uh, ensure that whatever I write actually impacts people, actually, you know, brings about some kind of improvement in their lives. Yeah. Tell us, tell us something about your Quora journey. How many years ha has it been? Uh, the first time I wrote an answer on Quora was, I think, uh, towards the end of 2014. Uh, I was more of a reader back then, so it's been quite a, you know, a long time. I think I started writing more actively in 2017, uh, 2016 or 17. Uh, before that, I used to write an answer a week or an answer a month or something like that. Uh, after that, it became much more frequent. Yeah, that's really It's been great. an amazing journey. Yeah. yeah. And you get to learn a lot because, you know, helping others, solving their questions. So. Definitely. Definitely. You learn a lot just by, you know, listening to uh, people uh, mm. on these platforms, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, now from Quora to publishing your own book. So uh, how did this, uh, the publishing changed your process of writing? Uh, so publishing a book is very different from uh, writing on Quora or uh, on any other blog, right? Because uh, a blog is generally one paragraph or two paragraphs, right? Or, or maybe a few paragraphs. But a book is a long uh, process where you have to ensure that, you know, there's a story that flows in, keeps the reader engaged throughout uh, a lot of pages, right? So I think uh, the process of writing evolves significantly when you're writing a book because you have to have a storyline in mind. You have to ensure that the reader is engaged from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was a journey that I went through uh, while uh, writing The Promises We Made. Yeah. Uh, and it's been a fantastic journey. It really, really opened my mind about how to ensure uh, you know, uh, that the engagement lasts uh, for a lot many words compared to a few paragraphs. How, how long did it take for you to write the book? Uh, it took me around three to four months to write the book. Uh, I tried to write it during the weekends whenever I found time. Uh, mm -hmm. And I also took a one and a half month sabbatical last year from work. I actually went to Europe on a solo trip. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I used to, you know, just spend my time dancing, uh, you know, having hot chocolates in various cafes <laughs> in Europe and, <laughs> and writing the book. Uh, Do, have you watched Friends? Uh, I have, yes. So, so your Barcelona. story is, yeah, yeah. So your story <laughs> is like Ross's, no, you're, I was backpacking through Europe. <laughs> uh, Western Europe, in the yeah. Mount, Kibidabu. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, 
because you started with reading and uh, then you published your own book so you are some you, i'm assuming you are someone who reads a lot so uh, share some tips for beginners who want to inculcate reading as a habit and uh, like how is it help you reading has definitely you know helped me quite a bit uh, because it exposes you uh, to a world which is uh you know beyond your own world maybe something you have never explored so far and maybe something you would like to explore in the future uh and it also improves your communication skills significantly so i think uh, everyone should definitely read and a few tips here would be uh, that you know start small if you if you haven't uh, been reading consistently maybe you read for a few uh, you know uh, hours maybe 30 minutes maybe one hour uh, every day or every week you know just start small and pick up books that you really like i mean a lot of uh, people say that you know i want to pick up heavy uh, heavy books on entrepreneurship or heavy books uh, you know which uh, which might lead me to more of an more of a motivational kind of a thinking uh, while they might not find it very interesting in the beginning so my sense is that you know whatever you like it could be of any genre right it could be a romance it could be thriller it could be a non fiction book uh, whatever you write pick uh, whatever you like pick that up and then just continue with it uh, i think once you start developing the habit of reading then you can start exploring a lot more genres yeah so reading for me is also more about getting the right recommendations so where do you get your recommendations uh, i think i have a few friends who also read quite a bit so we share uh, you know reviews of uh, books Uh, but other than that i think i just look at the amazon bestseller lists uh, look at the reviews there uh, check on goodreads yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that helps yeah. and uh, gates notes is always there with some insight yes. like, well gates has been giving some really good recommendation so uh, what is uh, one of your uh, like the most under appreciated novel that you think everyone should read so i think uh, i would rather say that you know uh, rather than the novel i think a lot of uh, indian authors are quite underappreciated yeah, yeah. uh, you know uh, be it uh, ravi subramanian be it uh, any other uh, indian authors novoneel right so they uh, they are appreciated in uh, a few circles mm-hmm. uh, but i think the books that they write deserve a lot more uh, of a readership uh, yeah. than they currently have yeah. I truly agree with you because uh, the last book I read was from Devdutt Patnaik, and it was yes. mind blowing. It was about the queer community, and uh, it had folk folk tales and you know folklores from all over India. The scriptures and everything, super interesting. So I think I'm Devdutt gonna... is on my list. Ooh, yes. ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shikhandi, hmm. the name is Shikhandi. Shikhandi, okay, got it. All right, so um, because um. Uh, i have i have i'm guilty of not reading your novel but someone from my team did and he told me all about salsa and stuff and uh, so i read this book called the antidote uh, the happiness for people who can't stand positive thinking and it had this quote and i quote life is a dance and when you are dancing you are not intent on getting somewhere the meaning and purpose of dancing is the dance which is all about the journey so being nice. a polymath with and and having an eclectic range of interest including salsa what is your message for all those struggling with uh, time management right so uh, see time management i think uh, comes when you set very clear goals for yourself mm-hmm. uh, right uh, so it can't be haphazard the way i do it generally is every morning i wake up you know if it is a working day uh if i'm going if i'm not working from home right in the pre uh, covid times if i am traveling by cab i would just take out 5 10 minutes during the cab to just plan my day uh, what do i want to do uh you know uh, in terms of my work uh, when will i get free in the evening and once i get free in the evening what is my plan for the uh, for the evening right and if it is a weekend then even then i would just take out 10 minutes uh in the morning because your mind works best in the morning at least my mind works best in the morning right so i just use that time over a cup of coffee to plan my day and then try to execute that it it doesn't have to be fully mechanical you don't have to plan each and every detail but i think some bit of planning really helps in uh, you know in managing your time mm-hmm. and the way i uh, generally do is you know i don't like sitting idle so i i like to do something or the other all the time even if i'm on a vacation mode you know even uh, whatever it is i like to do something 
it could be anything right outside uh, our uh, comfort zone could be anything uh, but uh, as long as you keep exploring something you would uh, notice a lot of diverse skills that you have yeah i think to do that early under appreciated that's for yes sure. yes <laughs> keeps <laughs> you engaged and planned and organized yeah yes oh. completely yeah, yeah, yeah all right so um uh, now coming back to uh, i am and the bad so take us briefly to your journey at i am and the bad and how that journey changed you as a person so i am and the bad was very different uh from from my btech uh, college at it kanpur right because uh, during the during your engineering journey uh, you are basically just attending classes listening to uh, listening to the professor speak something and then just reproducing that in the examinations to a large extent mm-hmm. uh, right while i am in the world was so different you know the first day of the class you are actually the professor speaks for less than 10% of the time uh because 90% of the time it is the peer learning that happens you're supposed to participate in classes it's a case based uh, uh you know uh, methodology right where you uh, where there's no right answer you just debate on what could be a possible uh, answer to every different scenario so it was very different and it really opened my mind to a lot of business possibilities because i i mean i had not uh, really done anything related to management before so that way and when you take the views uh, in these case studies of your peers who are from different uh, backgrounds diverse backgrounds uh, i think that really helps uh, and i also started exploring quite a bit at uh, i am in the bad right i mean i went uh, i actually went for a dual degree exchange for a whole year to germany Okay. uh right so i think i spent most of my second year in germany huh. and uh, that was something that is really memorable because i was actually studying uh, a masters program there uh, with students from all over the world hmm. so the kind of exposure that you have is completely different i mean your professor is of, uh, also uh, from a different country your friends your uh, group mates are from different countries Yeah. right so you're studying with them you're getting uh, their view points on a lot of other uh, issues so i think it's it's very very uh, eye opening yeah, yeah yeah so uh, because you mentioned germany and everything and uh, because you hold a travel blog so tell us something about how traveling uh, like what is the one most important thing that traveling excites you uh, i think the most important thing for tra- uh, in traveling for me uh it's just a exposure to different uh different cultures different people whenever i go somewhere right i try to ensure that i don't do the normal touristy things but i actually you know uh, interact with the locals i do things that are really really uh, you know ingrained in the culture i eat the local food yeah. uh right so i i always stay in hostels wherever i go right mm-hmm. because i think you meet a lot of people when when you stay in hostels they, they are cheaper of course but you also yeah. Yeah. uh meet a lot of other travelers there so and then you can travel with them uh to different places i think that is the experience that i really like it's not uh, just about the place but you know exploring mm. uh different facets of life yeah. uh when you travel all right that sounds interesting so uh now coming back to uh, i am am the bad and uh, how you got into bcg how did you get into consulting uh so once i had not heard of consulting before i am in the bad frankly right once once i came uh, to am in the bad i started exploring the different uh, job options career options okay. and i was very confused between investment banking and management consulting in the beginning okay. uh, both were very good streams and you know uh, very similar uh, in terms of opportunities but then i talked to a lot of people talked to a lot of seniors colleagues uh who are in both these streams and i finally decided on management consulting i prepared for the summer placement interviews uh, mm-hmm. got selected at bcg uh, you know the internship went well i got a pre placement offer yeah uh, joined bcg and i've been at bcg for the past 3 uh, and a half years now oh all right so how how would you describe uh, the life of a consultant what what does your day look like so before the pandemic i used to on monday morning i used to wake up very early take a flight to the client location right maybe after the flight i would sometimes take a 3 4 hour cab ride if it is not a direct uh, you know flight right away yeah. and then uh, you know just set up a uh, plan for the day with the client uh, what all meetings need to happen what all are the deliverables uh, mm-hmm. for the day and also for the week right and then just start working on that 
uh, nowadays, uh, I mean, the travel is of course restricted. Some of the projects are traveling. Uh, a lot of cases uh, are from are work from home. So nowadays, I just wake up at eight thirty and eight forty five a.m. I'm uh, on my work desk, <laughs> uh, already uh, starting one of the meetings. Uh, but I think you know, as a consultant, um, uh, the exposure that you get is so huge, so vast. Uh, in the my first job, uh, my first project was with a steel plant. I had not uh, been in a steel plant before. I had zero clue about steel. I'm a computer science engineer yeah. who then did an MBA and this was my first job. And I was sitting in front of a you know, CEO who has been doing steel for you know, 25 years. I was not 25 years of age myself by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was supposed to explain to him uh, how he can uh, you know, improve his costs or how he can make steel better. So just imagine the kind of exposure you have and just imagine how much you have to learn to be able to uh, be at that position, uh, you know, to give a recommendation to a client who has been in an industry for long. So consulting really keeps you on your toes because you're, with each project, your industry changes. Uh, and then you have to really learn a lot at, in, a, in a very fast uh, span of time. Yeah. So I think that, that really uh, keeps me going. Yeah, sounds quite like a journey. Tell us, yeah. uh, okay. so tell us something about like what skills should a student amass if he or she wants to get into consulting? Uh, I think what's important is, you know, whatever uh, the student is doing, right? Uh, whatever you are doing, just ensure that uh, you do it uh, excellently. So for consulting, you don't need to have a particular uh, kind of a degree. You don't need to have a particular certification. That's not needed, right? Management consulting firms hire engineers, MBAs, CAs, doctors. They literally hire everyone. Uh, as long as they're excellent at what they do. Because mm-hmm. consulting in by its very definition uh, you know, is a generalist uh, kind of a profession. You don't need to uh, you know, have, be an engineer or be an MBA to uh, get into consulting. What matters is that you know you are a well-rounded person Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, your academic achievements have been good throughout, right? Uh, you you have some kind of a passion, could be anything, right? Uh, but you have some uh, extracurricular activities, you have strong communication skills, you have strong problem solving skills, because at the end of the day, uh, what you're doing is you're solving problems, yeah. right? And uh, that that is uh, really important. How do you think about problems? How do you develop a structured mm-hmm. way of thinking uh, when you are with a client? So all those skills develop, but uh, you know what is important is if you if you are doing excellently, you know whatever whatever course you are doing, if you are doing it with full passion and dedication, uh, that is what will reflect well in the interviews. Okay. So uh, okay. So uh, tell me something about uh, what is that one thing that you did very very correctly all throughout this process, and one thing that you could have improved on. So I think uh, one thing that I did correctly, right, uh, was that I did not uh, think uh, that, you know, if I have to go into consulting, this is what I need to do. Because I've been uh, performing well in academics throughout. That has been my primary goal that, you know, I need to do well in academics, uh, regardless of whether I like a subject or not. Right. So because the scores are something that stay with you, at least in the immediate term, wherever Mm -hmm. you apply. Right. So that has really helped me significantly because, you know, whenever, whenever I applied to consulting firms, I would get the shortlist uh, because the academic scores were good. Second, I uh, also ensured that, you know, I had a few uh, passions which I uh, pursued, not because of the CV, but because I really liked them. Yeah. Uh, for example, badminton. I was a I was an inter IT badminton player uh, during my B Tech times, okay. and uh, you know I I did that because I loved playing badminton. I loved spending time on the court. Right? I did I spent more time on the court than I did in classes. I think, okay. uh, but that also really helped me build my profile later. I le- realized that later when I was drafting my CV, right, mm-hmm. that all those badminton achievements also really helped me uh, get a short list, mm-hmm. right. So I think all that was good. Uh, one thing that I could have probably, uh, you know, uh, done better was explore a bit more, right? So for example, I uh, I did a lot of uh, courses in computer science during my BTEC. Yeah. Uh, and I did some courses in operations, maybe a couple of courses in uh, economics uh, as electives. Mm-hmm. But uh, my BTEC college really offered uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, opportunities to do courses beyond your own domain. I could have explored a lot more courses in other streams, Mm -hmm. right? IT Kanpur has a lot of electives uh, that you can take. 
uh, that would have uh, helped me get an exposure to strategy, to entrepreneurship, to a lot more domains, uh, which would have helped me even more when I when I entered an MBA, right? Because once I did that, it was it was just a rush of what you want to do. You know, you're always just uh, thrown up with a lot of opportunity, then you have to make a decision. Right, you talk to a lot of people and you get even more confused. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that is something that uh, you can probably work at. So any student who is planning to do a management uh, kind of course can start exploring ma- management uh, early on itself. Mm-hmm. That's what that was super honest and super helpful. So uh, thank you. Because you have mentioned it, I I also think that uh, you know we are kind of uh, running towards something in the box structure type of education system where we are just pursuing degrees without knowing them or, or you know just yes. because of the peer pressure so uh, and recently some uh, some student who has just passed like class 12 texted me on linkedin like uh, i am done with my class 12 what skills do you think i need to build on if i want to get into consulting or you know investment banking and that's too early on because you kind of you know, restrict yourself that I want to get into consulting, so I'll, I will do this only. But it is only through exploring that you know that, you know, maybe you are not a consultant. So, what but do you it's quite interesting this? that, you know, in class 12, people know what is consulting yeah. and what is investment banking. <laughs> yeah. I had absolutely no clue. Absolutely people no are on LinkedIn now. Like, yes. people who have just passed out of 12 are on LinkedIn now, and I'm like, that's too early. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, the exposure and the, you know, the, the information that is out there across mm-hmm. domains right now and the access to information is just incredible. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, uh, what advice would you want to give to a smart college, like smart driven college student who is about to enter the real world and uh, what advice should they ignore? I think uh, one advice that I would really, you know, give to uh, anybody who is entering the real world is to not be afraid, at least in the beginning few years, to explore stuff outside your comfort zone, Mm -hmm. right? That opportunity could be in your career or it could be as an extracurricular hobby that you have, right? Uh, I'll give an example. I'm somebody who's been an academic oriented student uh, my entire life, right? I used to shy away from dancing. I've never danced. Uh, right in my life and then one day uh, when when I was in Germany I had a lot of Spanish friends who used to dance salsa quite a bit and they uh, one of these uh, nights they just went to a pub uh, which was playing uh, Latin music that night and I accompanied them and that is when I got to know that salsa existed and then I started learning salsa and I've been dancing ever since right which was something which I'd never expected the the same thing happened with uh, you know everything else that I did even writing a book is has been a very very uh, different kind of a journey. So just be open to exploring stuff which is outside your comfort zone, because that is how you will really expand uh, you know your skill sets. Uh, that is how you will uh, identify new interests that you uh, you know might not even know that exist. Right. Yeah. I think that is uh, that is something that should definitely be there. Right. And something that you can ignore rather is that, you know, uh, so uh, for example, uh, whenever, whenever you have to make a decision, mm-hmm. right, people say talk to a lot of people, take their advice and then, you know, just uh, go ahead with what um, with the majority is saying. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, believe in that philosophy. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, talk to people for sure. Make an informed decision because, you know, in a lot of cases, you would not know all the pros and cons. But what really helps me is that, you know, after I talk to a few people, uh, you know, after a particular point of time, you start getting saturated, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, the opinions are same or they are uh, kind of conflicting with each other. So what then helps me is that after a few, uh, you know, uh, sources of information, I try to just take a leap of faith towards what I really want to do, uh, faces all that information, right? So somebody, even if the majority is saying that, you know, go ahead with this particular decision, if I particularly don't want to do that from my heart, right, I might just choose the other one uh, as long as it's not a very, very big risk and does not involve a lot of investment, right? If it is, a, if it is not uh, something like that, then, then why not just follow your heart? I don't think, uh, I don't think it will uh, take you anywhere, you know, at a loss. Yeah. 
super enlightening rohan thank you so much for joining us and we wish you great luck and success for your book uh, thank you so much thanks a lot bhumika it was a pleasure being here thanks for inviting